Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. In today's special episode, we sat down with Rick Fisher, senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center. He sheds light on China's recent arms show at Zhuhai, what that means in terms of U.S.-China competition, and how the U.S. shapes up in comparison. Rick, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Tiffany, thank you for having me back. So let's talk about China's biggest arms show that's inside China and many foreign journalists can't attend, and that's the Zhuhai Air Show. So with this current one, what do you see being different from previous ones? Well, the current Zhuhai show, uh, the 14th Zhuhai show, I was able to attend the first five until China stopped giving me visas to attend the show. But uh, every show has increased in terms of the level of sophistication of the products, if you will, that are on display, the weapons that are on display. And uh, this year continues that trend. Uh, there, there are advances in, in uh, missile weapons, uh, a, a plethora of unmanned systems, uh, uh, unmanned combat aircraft, unmanned ground combat vehicles, uh, and especially the melding of uh, manned and unmanned systems. And a lot of detail on uh, China's moon ambitions uh, for this Zhuhai show as well. And Rick, it seems this year for the first time they're displaying some of their strongest weapons. So what's some examples of that? Well, primarily the, the, the weapon that has been featured most heavily in Chinese state media is the first formal appearance of the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation J-20 fifth generation fighter. Uh, the, the J-20 first flew famously on January 11, 2011, uh, right about the same time that former uh, Secretary of Defense uh, Robert Gates was visiting China. It was viewed as, as an attempt to embarrass Bob Gates, who, who had thought, who had said the two years previous that China would have no stealth fighters by 2020. Well, the fact is that today, in 2022, China has close to 100 or perhaps slightly more than 100 of its J-20 fighters in, in service. And the opportunity to be able to see the J-20 up close uh, allows observers, uh, many fans, military fans in China, as well as uh, foreign intelligence observers to uh, get a get a sense of the quality of the construction of the J-20. It's a stealth fighter that incorporates uh, many of the features in the American uh, Lockheed Martin uh, F-22A and F-35 uh, fifth generation fighters. And China benefited from a, a very serious cyber espionage strike against Lockheed Martin back in uh, the, the mid-2000s. So China was able to exfiltrate many secrets, many details that assisted in the construction and development of the J-20 and one other uh, stealth fighter in development in China. But when you look closely at the J-20, you can see that uh, a great deal of effort has been expended in quality construction uh, a smooth uh, a finish, uh, smooth coatings. Uh, the the uh, rivets are 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 filled. Uh, it's it's it is a serious attempt at a stealth fighter, and uh, we already know that it has serious electronics, serious long range infrared systems, and can carry uh, China's longest range uh, air to air missiles. Uh, that that currently. Uh, at least uh, an, uh, for the next few months, perhaps, will have a longer range than American air-to-air -air missiles uh, in service. So it seems like in some ways a, a lot of it comes down to the aircraft itself. But what about the pilot skills? How much does that play into it? it, it it's extremely important. Uh, a, a pilot has to be able to see images either on his helmet display or in a, on his cockpit displays and react instantaneously to the information that he's given. In combat, 
you often only have a split second to uh, make a decision and uh, in order to survive. So a, a pilot has to be highly trained, but also very physically robust because a fifth generation fighter uh, conducting uh, super maneuver uh, maneuvers uh, uh, puts great stress on the simple body and bone structure of the pilot. So he has to have very highly developed muscles, especially uh, neck muscles, in order to be able to fly that airplane to its uh, outer limits. And you mentioned earlier, Rick, how there's also a lot of movement we're seeing in the, say, autonomous vehicle range. So was there any new surprises at this year's show? Well, uh, in terms of unmanned aircraft, uh, there were many revelations, but two were perhaps the most important. First, uh, the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation revealed its Wing Loom 3, uh, a large 6.2 ton uh, uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicle, UCAV, uh, that uh, has a phenomenal 40 hour endurance. It's probably about a, a third of the size larger than uh, uh, the major American uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicle, the uh, General Atomics uh, MQ-9. Uh, the MQ-9 is widely employed by the United States Air Force and by many uh, American allies. Uh, it, it has a, an endurance of about uh, 24 uh, to 30 hours, but the Wing Loom 3 is, was advertised at Zhuhai as potentially being developed uh, to conduct anti-submarine missions and perhaps uh, into a version that could be launched from an aircraft carrier. Uh, uh, it, it basically gives China's People's Liberation Army the ability to uh, uh, loft an aerial satellite that can stay on station probably for about a day and a half. Um, that's a very important capability in, when considering uh, China's intention to blockade Taiwan. In addition, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation revealed a new version of its uh, F-98A uh, 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 jet fighter size uh, UCAV. This is a, a swept wing jet powered UCAV that is intended to perform loyal wingman missions. Uh, it is to be an unmanned combat aircraft that will accompany manned combat aircraft. A manned combat aircraft could probably control one to four of these aircraft to perform defensive or offensive missions. Uh, the new version displayed at Zhuhai uh, this week uh, was equipped much more specifically for air-to-air -air combat, which requires a, or, or at least indicates that this company is able to achieve a much higher level of computing capability, most likely propelled by new artificial intelligence algorithms that will give this aircraft the ability to analyze a target and perhaps even decide whether to attack it or, or fly around it. Uh, it, it, it signifies a major advance. Now, the United States and other countries are working on similar technologies. The, uh, the, the China Aerospace uh, uh, UCAV looks very similar to that uh, produced by an American company called Kratos. The Kratos UCAV is flying. It's being tested. It's being tested in cooperation with American fifth generation fighters and one should expect that uh, the Chinese UCAV is being tested in cooperation with uh, People's Liberation Army Air Force uh, a fighter aircraft as well. And now it seems when we talk about a lot of these different weapon systems, one area that's brought up are lasers. So what did we see in terms of lasers this year? 
Tiffany, at this year's Zhuhai show, the Chinese revealed four battlefield combat laser systems. Three of them were mounted on trucks, one mounted on a small uh, Dongfeng uh, uh, company size uh, uh, four wheel truck, and a third was shown on a, on a trailer that would have to be towed by uh, another truck. In 2016, the People's Liberation Army was marketing its first 30 kilowatt uh, uh, power uh, battlefield laser. Um, such a laser could, could, was advertised as being able to penetrate multiple thin uh, uh, pieces of steel at about a kilometer. And uh, perhaps uh, uh, with with that performance indicator, it, it would be able to dazzle or uh, uh, fox or even destroy an infrared sensor or a thermal imager at uh, perhaps a two kilometers or perhaps more. Uh, the power levels of the lasers displayed this week were were not all revealed. One of them was revealed to have the power of 30 kilowatts. But it is my opinion that in terms of laser weapons, China is actually pacing the United States. Uh, they're about equal to what we are developing and producing. Now, next year, the U.S. Army hopes to take delivery of a prototype of uh, a truck-based laser that has a power level of 300 kilowatts. Now, that is powerful enough to uh, shoot down artillery shells uh, or uh, very fast, uh, um, or be able to damage at least, very fast missiles that are, that are coming to uh, uh, destroy you. That's a very important capability. Uh, the power levels that the United States sought in earlier chemical laser programs to be able to defeat uh, large ballistic missiles like ICBMs perhaps in their launch phase, was a, a power level of one megawatt. It's not clear when the United States will reach that level of power, but uh, 300 kilowatts, 600 kilowatts uh, is very useful uh, in a tactical sense, in a defensive sense. Uh, uh, we, and we know that China is working on lasers for uh, ships. It may have already deployed early laser weapons for its larger uh, combat warships, and is also working on airborne uh, laser weapons, as is the United States. That was Rick Fisher, senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center. And for those watching our full episode, after a break, we hear more from him on what Xi Jinping's recent talks of preparing for war means going forward. Our full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.